Hello, I'm Mark Price. I'd like to talk to you today about not being afraid, or as it says in today's gospel, be not afraid. First, a little story. A pastor got up in front of his congregation and announced that they're starting a fundraiser to raise money for a new building project at the church. And he said that they're taking pledges at this service and the first person to pledge $1,000 would get to pick the next three hymns. And this one woman, older woman in the back, raised her hand to choose me. <laughs> and so I pledge. And so the pastor said, oh, thank you. You pledge $1,000? She said, yes, I sure do. And the pastor said, well, then you get to pick the, the hymns you like. So what hymns do you want? And she smiled, looked around the congregation, and she said, well, she said, I pick him, I pick him, and I definitely pick him. <laughs> there you go, another woman who knows what she wants. So, the gospel today is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 36. Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side of the sea while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw a strong, how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O ye of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. After making the crossing, they came to land at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought to him all those who were sick and begged him that they might touch only the tassel of his cloak. And as many as touched the tassel were healed. The gospel of the Lord. So here you have a situation where Jesus dismisses the, the crowd. These are the crowd are the people that uh, he just fed, the 5,000 plus men, not counting women and children, the multitudes. And he dismisses his apostles, tells them to go to the other side of the lake. He'll join them the next day. Just before the feeding of the 5,000, so a day before this, he was told that his cousin John had been executed, beheaded by King Herod, and he needed to mourn. In fact, when he heard that, he tried to get away and be alone and mourn. But if you remember from yesterday's reading, the crowd saw him and brought him back saying, please teach us, talk to us, heal us. And Jesus stopped what he was doing, healed them, and then, of course, fed all that were there with the five loaves of bread and two fish. Well, today is a continuation of that. Jesus, it starts off saying to the apostles, go to the other side, I'm going to pray. And Jesus goes up the side of the mountain to pray. And then it says at the fourth watch, he goes out walking across the sea. Now, the fourth watch is a phrase or term that's used a few times in Scripture, Old Testament and New Testament. And it means the hours between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. And those are the hours, for example, in the Old Testament, it's used when it talks about the Israelites escaping slavery from the Egyptians, and uh, they did it during the fourth watch, the 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Often in Scripture, that's sort of referred to as, that's God's time. You know, the world's doing its stuff at midnight and around the rest of the night, but God's time is this fourth watch, this 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. And it's during this fourth watch 
that Jesus is walking out on the, on the lake, on top of the water, uh, to his apostles who are scared, they're frightened, they're nervous because of the storm. And he gives us two things that uh, I'm going to speak briefly to this morning. One is, he tells us what we should do, be not afraid, and he tells us how to not be afraid, come follow me. So he tells us to be not afraid of all the storms that the world throws at us, and he tells us that the way to not be afraid is to come to him, is to follow him, is to be a disciple of Jesus, get into a relationship with Jesus, turn to Jesus. You see, being a Christian, being a person of faith doesn't get rid of the storms. It just gives us an easier way to get through the storms that the world gives to us. Right now in the Southeast, they're dealing with a hurricane that's coming to shore in Florida and South Carolina and North Carolina. And I always remember with hurricanes, you got that devastation when they first come in, and then you've got that period where, they, where the eye of the storm is going over you and you feel this quiet, no, no winds, no rain, you don't feel the uh, the torment and the horrible nature of the hurricane. There's a certain peace. And that always reminds me of what Jesus is talking about. In the midst of the storm, during the eye of the storm, that's me, that's, that's God, that's, that's me giving you peace. Be not afraid because I will bring you the eye in the middle of the storm. I will bring you the peace that you need when the world keeps throwing its storms at you and making life tough. There's a lot of reasons in our world today that we get afraid. Natural disasters, of course, are one of them. But, uh, and I always try to turn to God through Jesus. But uh, a lot of things frighten us. Um, death frightens people. There's a lot of people who are afraid of, of death and dying, not only their own, but they're afraid when others have died or are dying who are close to them. I remember when I was 25 years old, my mother died. She was only 56. She died of cancer. And I remember on the night that she had died, uh, she died in the afternoon, and that night I'm going to bed and I was scared. I was frightened. She was the closest person to me that had died, and I wanted to know she was okay. And I remember laying in bed sort of uh, filled with anxiety, and I start to pray, and I ask God, please tell me she's okay. I said, don't let her show up, because that'll give me a heart attack. But just somehow let me know she's okay. And during the middle of that prayer, I felt a hand on my forehead, warm hand, and it kind of went down my face and all the way down my body. And just as it passed through me, over me, immediate peace, like that eye in the middle of the hurricane. I felt that sense of comfort, that sense of peace. Jesus says, don't be afraid, and the way to not be afraid is to come to me. In 2009, I had a massive heart attack, and thankfully I was in the hospital at the time, and they brought me right into the, rushed me into the emergency room, and the doctors told me later that when they were putting me out to go in and deal with the heart attack, I said a prayer out loud. And I said to them, well, that doesn't surprise me. What did I say? And they told me that I said this, that I said, God, I'm ready to, to go. If it's your will that I die and I go, that's fine. That's fine, you've given me a great life. I'd like to stick around and see what happens with my daughter, but if it's my time, I understand. I turn to God in the midst of a heart attack, and let me tell you, they're horrible things, heart attacks, and they scare you, and they're frightening, and I was scared, and I was frightened, and I turned to God, and I found a sense of peace, knowing that he was there with me. So that's what we as people of faith should find in our lives, is that, that um, bit of peace. We're in our world today, we got the anxiety and the stress that's caused by this pandemic. Many, many people are scared and frightened, and they should be. It's a horrible virus that's killing people. But it's made worse by the world when you got politicians out there scaring people and contradicting themselves, medical leaders, professionals in the medical field contradicting each other and and the media of course the media runs around like chicken little the sky is falling the sky is falling danger will robinson danger and they thrive on scaring people and so the world is thriving on scaring us and confusing us and giving us stress and anxiety jesus is saying be not afraid come follow me i will give you rest Amen. So what I want to do is my good friend again, Thomas, 
Doubting Thomas, is um, an eyewitness at the storm and being on that boat, and he wants to tell us about it. So, Doubting Thomas in his own words. At one point at the end of the evening, Jesus said, you must send these peoples away. I need to mourn for my cousin. I must be alone. So we say yes to him, and he went up to the side of the mountain. He told us he would meet us at the other side of the lake in the morning. So the rest of us, excuse, told the peoples to go home. We got into the boat, and we set up out onto the lake to go across the lake. Now, we were barely out onto the lake when the weather had changed. Never had I seen the weather change so rapidly as it did. It weather changed, the storm came up, the wind was blowing, the rain was coming down, and then the fog came in. And the boat is blowing this way and that way, and we are scared to death. We've never seen anything like this. And we start to call out, please save us, someone save us. And then someone on the boat with us said, look, there's a figure, there's something coming to us, it must be a ghost. So we started to call out, help us, there's a ghost. And then we heard a voice. And the voice said, be not afraid. And when we heard the voice, Simon, he stood up. He said, that's the voice of Jesus. And Simon stepped out of the boat and started to walk to Jesus. Can you imagine? Let me tell you, that's what Simon would do. <laughs> no, Simon would, would do something and then think about it. That was Simon. And he is out on the, and he is walking under the water, and he is, there's Jesus coming to him, and he is walking, and, they, and then a, a wave came and hit Simon on the side, and it must have frightened him because he took his eyes away from Jesus. And do you know, just as he took his eyes away from Jesus, he sank. He sank, and he started to call out, Help me! I am here, and the water is rough! Help me! Help me! And Jesus helped to bring him over. We took him and brought him up onto the boat. Jesus came into the boat, and we were all just sitting there. And we looked at Simon and said, What were you thinking? What on earth were you thinking? But as we were there just relaxing for a few seconds, the storm came back. The storm came back bigger and, and harder than it was. The boat was blowing harder than it ever was this way, that way. It was rocking up, walking this way. The wind was coming down. The rain was blowing, and we were frightened. We said, Jesus, you must save us. You must save us. We are going to die. We're going to drown. Do you know what Jesus did? He raised his hand. He just raised his hand. And just as he raised his hand into the air, the weather had stopped. Now, what kind of a man can command the weather just by raising their hand? Jesus. He did this. Yes? Well, there you go. Doubting Thomas gives us, I think, a great first-hand account of what it was like being on that boat and Jesus coming out and quelling that storm. So remember... Being a Christian, being a person of faith doesn't get rid of the storms. It just gives us a place of comfort to go to in the midst of the storms. Jesus says, don't be afraid and come and follow me. Amen. This is Mark Price. Thanks for listening.